and the linebacker. Big play for Oshkosh here at third and three. If they don't get a first down here, they'll be leaving Stevens Point in good field position after a punt. So it's a big third down play for the Titans. Oh, and I maybe he dived across for the first down. Excellent uh, keeping in balance, keeping his feet by Jeff Peterson. Well, you give him all the credit in the world on that play because he was stopped far short of the first down. You're going to see him hit, I think, twice here. And that's still spin away. There's the first contact. Now he's going to spin again. There's the second contact. Now he's third, and he spins away and dives forward for the first down. That's an excellent effort by that quarterback, Jeff Peterson. Just a little bit of a lack there of uh, game tech. I think there's a couple of people that could have come up, but I think they gave up a little bit too soon. I think they should have been in on the tackle, but they thought the play was over. Very quick quarter here at Kirky Field. A minute 30 left in this third quarter. Almost a late pitch, and the ball is loose. And Stevens Point recovers on the 14-yard line. Very, very smart recovery, too. Uh, I think he had a little bit of an idea there of scooping the ball up and running it in the end zone, but he wanted to make sure he got the ball first. Good play. Also, uh, there you can see a patent number 44 on the back. That's Tom Finkel from Wassa West who causes the fumble. Watch Finkel come up here and take the running back. There's the tackle. Finkel stays with the back, strips him Strip of the ball, him. and then allows the pointer to recover. And Greg Dantoin gets on the ball like Jim Brown said cleanly and just gets on it to make sure they have possession. Greg Dantoin has not had a chance for an interception in this game. He's got 14, uh, 14 interceptions in 16 games. But he picks up the big fumble recovery here instead. We'll take the recovery. So the 14-yard line now. The pointers with a great opportunity in the short snap again goes to Canise and he's in big trouble well he lost his footing there he watched him his first foot slipped as he was taking off and that just destroyed any chance the play had of, of going anywhere absolutely when you lose that first step that's the big key for Rob Brown from uh, Oshkosh he's got the great first step see can easily slip right there he cannot get to the outside fast enough and there comes all kinds of the pursuit from Oshkosh well that play worked once uh, for about eight yards in the first half but they get to uh, lose a couple out of it here so it'll be a second down and 13 from the 17 yard line seeing more running plays now. I think that Oshkosh has sort of taken over the tempo here. We need a completion right now. And Baumgartner had time. Now it breaks down, and he's going to go down back on the 27-yard line, a loss of about 10 more. You've got to credit not only that defensive line with making a stop, but also the deep secondary back there as they are just making it difficult for him to find anybody to throw to. Oshkosh, Oshkosh doing everything right on defense now. They're doing everything right in the whole ball game, or in the whole second half here, offensively and defensively. Look at Bumgarner stand back there and look for somebody. Then he tries to break away from the oncoming rush, and he just can't go anywhere but down. In that case, he, he probably should have let that ball go right at the goal post. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to take that big a loss. And there comes Andy Yates is one of the guys we've called his number several times already today. Now here in all of our talking up here, we fail to see the fact that there was a flag thrown on the play, and they're marching off a penalty here against Oshkosh. All right. Now they're uh, picking up the uh, Stevens Point formula for uh, holding defense. Second down. Well, it will be second down for the pointers after the defensive holding by the Titans. Well, that really changes the complexion of this next uh, play, I'll tell you. Jim, I thought that was a good analysis there where, where uh, Kirk Baumgartner probably should have delivered the ball away from everybody and not taken the sack. But he's going to learn those things as he gets a little more experience at playing college quarterback. Oh, you're going to see him as a senior. He's going to be a fine-looking quarterback. Could very well be the last play of the third quarter here is the clock running down. Now 20 seconds left. And Baumgartner straight over center. The slant in, I think, should be open. A good defensive play. Baumgartner didn't have a chance there as Benji Bight came in from the left side. Well, he just blew in there. It's almost as uh, though he were in the pointer huddle and knew exactly what play they were going to run. Exactly, and uh, we'll see it once more here as the third quarter comes to an end. I think he even knew the count. Yeah, you can't see Bight coming originally, but you can sort of see him getting see him getting there to his destination. So the pointers are clinging to a 10-7 lead after three quarters. When's the last time you ate a work of art? The restaurant in Stevens Point. An American bounty dinner. Service that's personalized, attentive. When's the last time you ate a work of art? A special evening at the restaurant inside Century World Headquarters, Stevens Point. For 
people on the move. It's footwear from Weinbrenner Factory Shoe Outlet. Be on target with 8-inch insulated hunting boots, only $37.99. For working or hiking, these water-resistant boots are unbeatable at only $35.99. And remember, whether first-line specials or boots with minor flaws or defects, you'll get high quality and low prices with every style. Footwear from Weinbrenner Factory Shoe Outlet. You'll wear out before they do. And here's a big play for Oshkosh right before at the end of the third quarter, Jim. Yeah, they're blitzing in there, and it makes it a long third and 15. You know, it's interesting to look at the first half and see Baumgartner doing some scrambling and putting a little pressure on the end there uh, on an option. And we haven't seen much of that in the second half, and I think uh, I'd like to see that right now. Well, it's a third and 14 from the 18, and if they don't connect here, it'll be Kim Drake time again with the field goal. And Baumgartner with a lot of time over the yeah. middle. And a nice catch over the middle by Ted Blanco at the sixth-yard line. Still going to be a fourth down coming up. He's going to come up about a half a yard short. Four. I don't know if I'd kick a field goal right now. Uh, I think what I'd do is I'd go for it. I think that's I think that's what they're going to do. You can just see Baumgartner standing back in here and just waiting and waiting and waiting for Blanco to clear that zone, and then he is able to throw the ball and he really puts something mustard on this one. Well, you can hear the fans. What they want uh, D.J. Leroy to do is go for it. He's going to. And it'll well, be we better a hurry up. up. You don't want to delay a game. Yeah. It's a fourth down and two from the six-yard line. Yeah, got to call time off. Has to take the time off. Well. Gives you a little more time to talk it over, and it, it is a big play in the ball game, and you don't want to mess it up by not knowing the count or what you're going to do exactly. And, you know, you have the, the timeouts left. It's not like you're running off uh, and you're going to use your last one. Or anything. This is so so uh, important to play that you're going to have to really take some time, talk to your coaching strategy, and find out where you want to attack, and then make sure you execute. You, know, you go to the uh, uh, high school games and some of the college games, these coaches are taking timeouts with them into the locker room. What for? You can't use them in the locker room. Here's a good place to give everybody a chance to look things over and execute. Well, what do you call here, Greg or Jim, uh, if you're D.J. Leroy? Well, you don't need a whole lot of yardage, but your running game has not been a, a picking up a whole lot of yardage for you in the game either. So, you know, chances are you're probably going to see him maybe run some kind of a rollout situation and, and see if he can uh, get somebody open in the flat area for a short pass in the first down. I think what you got to do is spread out the, uh, the defense a little bit and give yourself some options on the outside. That seemed to work in the first half, and I mentioned that earlier. I think we should go back and do it again. Uh, stretch out the defense and maybe go off right tackle between 70 and 8 and see what happens. Give yourself some options on that side. All right, here we go with a big fourth down and two from the six for Stevens Point. And Baumgartner is rolling right. Get around, get around, Looking, finds Blanco in the end zone for the touchdown and a fourth down and two. Boy, that, that was picture perfect. Almost like we drew it for him up here in the booth. But uh, again, just as we said, they, they had to give themselves a, some options, some different things. Baumgartner had the option of running, but he really drilled the ball in there uh, to Ted Blanco, a fine touchdown pass. And he really does throw the ball well on the run. It was a flood pattern. If you looked out there, it seemed like there were nothing but purple jerseys in that corner of the end zone. And, and you really don't know which guy to pick up. And he's got the strong arm, and he bullets it right in there for the touchdown. Kirk Bumgarner here puts so much pressure on you as a defensive player because he can throw the ball so well running. Now, he's got the option to run to the outside to get the first down, or he can throw it, and he elects to throw it for the score. And the extra point is good. So Stevens Point gets a big touchdown. And now lead this game by 10 at 17-7. It's new, it's exciting, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And it's coming to you with hundreds of dollars in free merchandise gift certificates and valuable discounts on dining, groceries, entertainment, automotive, health, and special services. The ultimate advantage personal discount card. Check your mailbox today for your new and exciting adventure in shopping with the ultimate advantage personal discount card. Folks, it's 4x4 time at Rose Murphy's October Rodeo of number one rated Toyotas. First in resale value, reliability, and safety on the highway, according to 1986 Consumer Reports. We'll rustle up some fine bargains for you at our South Grand Avenue Corral. Hit the trail to Rose Murphy Toyota and round up a tough Toyota truck today. Looking for trucks? Good news. Rose Murphy's got them. Yeah! We're going to 
We're going to get a chance one more time to see quarterback Kirk Baumgartner rolling out to his right, giving himself the options, and then watch him drill the ball in here to, to Ted Blanco, the big tight end who makes a nice catch and a, a very, very big score here for, another, for the pointers. Well, you know, you take that score and you take everything in the second half that's happened so far, we're right back to where we started the second half. All of the fine play by Oshkosh, you know, you're, you're sitting there and we're right back. It just defeated all that. So that little fumble over there is a very, very big uh, opportunity for the pointers, and they take advantage. Just a reminder, this afternoon's UW-Stevens Point football game is brought to you by Hadley Office Products, your office equipment headquarters in Wausau. And Kim Drake with the kickoff here with 14 minutes left in this game. Point now leading by seven. And Fromm is trying to get outside. And now gets hauled on at about the 26-yard line. Excellent uh, specialty team play here by the pointers, and they've done a good job of that all season, and especially in our game today, as uh, we have not seen many runbacks go very far for Oshkosh. So Oshkosh now with a key offensive uh, possession here. Well, they have to score twice. That, that's a foregone conclusion. And with 14.06 on the clock, uh, each drive is, is just as important. <laughs> And a first down and 10 from the 26 for Jeff Peterson and the Titans. Wide receivers split left and right. Running backs pull behind Peterson, and he'll keep it and go down after no gain. That's Rick Perona, I believe, number 17. Oh, check that. That's uh, number 37, John Bouchard, a linebacker who read his keys and then slanted in to make the stop. Let's see if we can see John Bouchard. There he's lined up right in front of the camera. Fights off the block and then uh, dives in and makes the stop, taking the quarterback, which is his responsibility on that play. And it'll bring up a second down and 10. I understand your uh, high school won another football game this afternoon, Greg. Yes, they did. Uh, I believe the score was 23 to 6. Uh, they defeated Chippewa Falls in the final. Stevens Point for Jelly High School. Having a great season so far. And a nice catch over on the left side as Peterson hits his receiver. That's John O'Fleur. The reception. And that's the former point connection. The uh, Both of those ball players were here as freshmen at UW Stevens Point and then well, transferred to Oshkosh. As a matter of fact, uh, LaFleur is a freshman on the Stevens Point track team, was a javelin champion. So, what an athlete, John LaFleur, and he catches a big pass there. Good for a first down, down the 38 yard line. Second pass completion of the game for Oshkosh. <laughs> Peterson with a quick hitter again to Fromm, and he almost breaks it. Great arm tackle there by the pointer uh, defensive lineman, Bill Kalaji, number 78, that uh, managed to stick that arm out and, and uh, bring the Rob Fromm down, but he is an excellent running back. Just a quick opener again, just the same play that they use for a touchdown, and you'll see Kalaji, number 78, right there, grab a hole of a, what looked like a part of his jersey or his pants and bring him right down. Great arm strength in the player behind you. Bill Kalaji is a very strong young man. He's 5'11", weighs about 235 pounds, and he's extremely strong. And it'll be a second and four, and Peterson's going to throw the ball, and he's... Shoot, is it complete? Right on the sideline. Tough ball down there. Corner fans think he was out of bounds, but Fleur with a nice catch. Well, he's only got to have, I believe, one foot in bounds in college, and D.J. Leroy's not real happy about the call, but the official was not too far away, so we have to assume he made the correct one. Well, if they want the video replay, we can uh, give that for him here. <laughs> give me the I mean, what the heck. The, truck. <laughs> the NFL. <laughs> they threw that pass right over number 16, uh, Greg Dantoin, the outstanding defensive back for the pointers. Uh, I think he got a little bit fooled, or somebody did on the play, and they threw between two people. Got a big first down for the Titans, moving the ball now on the 33-yard line of Stevens Point. Peterson with a couple of big passes on this drive. And Peterson to throw. Nice going long to Linaberry, and it's overthrown in the end zone. Well, he just uh, was not open that time. Scott Nikolai was right there with him, and haven't we seen him do that before today? But uh, you know, the recent success here that Oshkosh has had throwing the ball probably once makes you wonder why didn't they throw it a little bit more earlier in the ballgame. And I think they're letting the situation dictate whether they do it or don't. And in this particular case, he had an excellent head fake to the left, give a little semi-pump, and uh, as a result, he turned around. But the defense wasn't buying anything. That'll be a second down and 10 now for Jeff Peterson and the Titans. And 
Peterson will keep it himself, and he's going to be brought down after about a yard gain. So good job again by the pointer defense. You know, this Scott Nicola over here, he, he's really a good ball player. He doesn't uh, run all over the field. He plays territorial, you know. He takes his area and his man and uh, and helps out where he can. He's an excellent football player. He's a very solid football player, Jim. We had a chance to watch him in high school as he prepped that Chippewa Falls McDonald, and he was an excellent uh, athlete there. Well, the Iowa Hawkeyes have moved out in front of our Wisconsin Badgers now in the fourth quarter. Score of 17-6. There you see the fourth quarter, but Bucky Badgers still uh, having a problem with getting in the end zone. Peterson back to throw again. Throws high to Lineberry over the middle. And that'll fall incomplete. Overthrew him a little bit. I believe he did have him open. And again on the coverage is Scott Nikolai, the uh, defensive cornerback on this side. And he was step for step, and when the ball was thrown, he went up, and they both went up together, and they both played the ball. You'll see the pointers in a blitz situation here, and uh, I think the Oshkosh had the right play call, but Nikolai was right there, had good contact just as the ball got to the receiver. Well, needing a couple of scores and a fourth down and eight from the 32. Obviously, Oshkosh going for it here. So a big play for the Oshkosh Titans. Going to have to put a little bit of a, uh, a rush here, a little blitz. He got him. Excellent defense by the point. I know it was excellent defense, Cal, but it also was a mess up on the part of Oshkosh. I don't believe that's the play they had called. I think Greg Peterson uh, uh, somehow or another got a signal across it. Everybody went right, he went left, and he's it's almost a naked reverse here with no it, one to help him. It almost looks like a naked bootleg, it does, but uh, I think it was a call play. Well, it's real possible, but it certainly wasn't the right call as we look at it now <laughs> in replay again. All right, so the Stevens Point Pointers will take over at first and 10 on their own 38 yard line. Yeah, the coach is up in the uh, roof above us here. Uh, probably don't agree. They probably thought that play was open. Well, we may see the pointers now eat up a little time on the ground as Kniece tries to go over right tackle and gets about maybe a yard. I think the pointers would like nothing better than to be able to put a nice, long, sustained drive here uh, featuring a lot of ground game. Uh, eat that clock up as we've got 11 minutes and 18 seconds left to play here in the game. Well, the talk was before the game that uh, among fans and uh, some of the coaches that uh, they thought they could score on Oshkosh today. I think they, that's what they, their feeling was. But, you know, the Oshkosh defense uh, has bent a lot in the past, but it hasn't broken very often, and it's the same case again today. Now we'll take a look at it from the end zone camera here. Let's see if they break over to the right side or left side and scramble a little bit and get some options working. Baumgartner will throw short. Well, they faked a little bit to the right and then threw to the left, but uh, the pass was not real well thrown. Well, I'll tell you, Blanco spent a lot of time on the ground today going for passes, but that one just a little bit too low. Well, you know, it looked like he got the nose of the football down, and, and the object of that, if you're going to throw low, is to keep the nose of the ball up so that your receiver has something to grab onto. That's difficult to catch the ball when it is thrown that low. It's yeah. very, very hard in the hands. Again, we're glad you're with us this afternoon. A great crowd, over 5,500 on hand at Kirkby Field this afternoon, and they're seeing a good one. The Pointers leading 17-7. We're down to 10 and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's Bob Gardner from the shotgun. Looks over the middle, can't find anybody open. Now throws it, throws it into a crowd, and pulls onto it. Holy cow. Did he paid for that. He took a tremendous hit. Blanco's having a great day. Boy, he sure is. And, you know, so is Kirk Baumgartner. That was a tough pass to throw again, rolling out a little bit off balance. Uh, you'll see as he rolls to his right here, the protection is good for a moment, breaks down, but uh, he still is able to scramble and then throw it on the dime. But again, he's going to be throwing over the middle, and he throws it high. When you do that, you're going to pay for it. You can see, bam, down he goes. There were an awful lot of white shirts around Ted Blanco that Looks time, like and that can be a little bit dangerous fast, but it was a completion. Looks like an excellent center fielder, I think. That's <laughs> a first down of 10 now, just inside Oshkosh territory at the 49, and the pitch out goes to Chrisman, who will try the right side, and gets maybe a yard. I'll tell you what, Brownie, there aren't an awful lot of center fielders that got to make catch with, catches with about 17 guys standing around them, though. is running and I think that's the important thing right now you, everything is complete uh, you keep the clock running and take away uh, the times that Oshkosh is going to have a chance to get the ball back uh, we've, we've talked about it before but uh, the clouds look like they could open up just about any time here interesting statistic that the pointers lead this overall series uh, between them and UW Oshkosh very close <laughs> played a lot of close games and no exception today 17-7 Stevens Point Again, Bob Gardner from the shotgun has a lot of time. And we got a penalty flag, obviously uh, holding, I guess. The pass is complete to Christman, but it'll be called back. 
So did Kirk Baumgartner take a hit that time from one of those big defensive linemen, uh, Robert uh, Czernecki, a uh, six foot one, 255 pound freshman. You'll see, maybe get a chance to see the late, uh, the hit here just as he gets ready to release the ball. There's the flag indicating the hold, and there's the hit just as he throws it, and he still is able to complete the pass. Well, again, the penalty is uh, stopping a Stevens Point drive, and that's the case here, too, as they'll mark it off. And Holding, 5-4, offense. Second down. Well, you know, that I think is about the fourth offensive uh, holding penalty we've had in the game. I think it's twice on Bowen now that we've had a holding penalty. That'll bring up a second and about 17 to go. Interesting to watch the referee as he sold the call to the coach. He yelled over. He said he had him with both hands on the jersey coat. You know, referees have to sell the call. They have to believe them. I never doubted you guys, Brownie. <laughs> Baumgartner again from the shotgun. Again, he has time looking over the middle, throws over the middle, and throws high. It's picked off. There's an interception. First of the afternoon on Baumgartner. And it's a fumble. What a hit. Ralph Radke ends up with the ball. Describe that one. I don't think you could. You I could see it. You could believe it because it was an outstanding hit by Mike Chrisman. After the interception, you're going to have to just watch as Chrisman comes out of nowhere to make the hit. Here, Bumgarner goes back to throw, and he's got some time to throw the ball. So we've been talking about the fact that he's been throwing him kind of low. This one, he gets up in the air. It's a wobbly pass over the intended receiver's hand. There, the ball is picked off. And watch Mike Chrisman now as he comes from the bottom left-hand section of your screen and delivers one fierce blow to pop the ballers. There comes Chrisman right there. And there's the pop in the air. Here comes Radke. And there comes Radke <laughs> to pick it off. And I think he was the most surprised fellow in the stadium. Ah, he loved to carry those, those linemen love to carry the ball. <laughs> Chrisman with a big hole on the right side. Some nice footwork gets inside the 40-yard line. You don't think that that pumped up Mike Chrisman just a little bit, do you? He just threw his block, and I, I think the guy went about six yards back downfield. You notice the point of attack was right on his man. Well, Radke will talk about years to come how he carried the ball in, in the game against Oshkosh. <laughs> hero of homecoming. You he bet. May, he may tell the point of your coaching staff he wants to play fullback <laughs> next year. When are we going to have a fridge or something? Yeah. <laughs> There's a gain of nine on that carry by Chrisman. He a second down one. Kenise and Chrisman behind Baumgartner. Straight. Wasn't looking to go up the middle. Kenise will get caught for about a two-yard loss. Good play by John Schmidt, one of the linebackers, to come up and uh, make the stop here for uh, UW Oshkosh. And that'll bring up a third down and two for the pointers. Well, that play was going nowhere from the beginning. It seemed like, again, somebody was in the huddle. They had it forecast correctly, and there were two men there with a third coming up from the back to shut it down. You know, this Kinesis is an excellent blocking back also. You watch him on, on plays when he doesn't have the ball. He's still doing 100%. And a big third down and two now for Stevens Point if they want to keep this drive alive. Baumgartner, once again from the shotgun. And he had to throw that ball awful early. He had no choice because Benji Vite was bearing down on him hard. I think he threw that one out of desperation. Uh, he was really going to get sacked, and he knew it, and he tried to deliver the ball so he wouldn't have to take the sack. Yeah, he took and threw the ball away and saved himself about 10, 11 yards. You know, and there's a little bit more of that maturing of the freshman quarterback. As we said before, why didn't he do it when he had the chance? This time he sees it coming and does get rid of the ball. Good play. Now look for a good hang time here. He's got about the 38-yard punt. But now he's got to get it higher. And Dan Toyne to do the kicking. And he tries to get it high. A wobbler. Fromm calls for the fair catch right on the 10-yard line. And that's where the Titans will start. The crucial drive trailing by two scores at 17-7. A little surprised to see Fromm even catch that one. I think the rule they say is inside the 10, you let it go. And he was there. But uh, he was thinking probably the pointers may have a chance to down it uh, even closer to the goal right. line. Well, needing two scores to get back in the ball game here. Seven minutes, 20 seconds left in the game. Uh, we're going to see some uh, razzle-dazzle here or something. Well, unless Fromm can break a long one, they're going to have to put the ball in the air. But this is not the situation that a Veer team likes to be in, a team that does not throw the ball a great deal. It's hard to come from behind with the wishbone or the Veer. We're down to 7.20 left in this WSUC game. Stevens Point clinging to a 17-7 lead. And a quick handoff to Fromm as they try and get him loose, and he almost, he is loose. He stumbles. They're going to try and get him from behind. Tommy Rob Fromm is Tom Finkel. 
chases him. Now, I'll tell you, that, that kid can run. Oh, Rob Fromm is an excellent running back. Again, you have to be an excellent back to pick up the yardage that he has throughout his career. But uh, he was hit three, four times and almost stumbled and fell. And we'll try to see how many times he is hit on this particular replay. You know, we were thinking about him as he came into this game, uh, getting into the top five. Uh, he might be up around the top three very shortly. In the all-time rushing uh, history right. of that school. Yep. Well, I'll tell you. You got to give credit to Jim Dolan, who was down there with Fromm pushing that, that big offensive guard all the way down the field. Did a heck of a job running interference for him. Good speed in the Forty-four yard line now. The pointers is they give it to Matsky uh, for about two yards. Something we failed to mention on the last play was a, a good job done by Scott Nikolai. Scott was the safety on that play. Got blocked, almost knocked uh, over from behind, and uh, yet he was able to get over there and force that play out of bounds after the long run. You know, we were just talking about Fram and how many yards he, he has 171 yards in the ball game. Outstanding. And they still only have seven points on the board. Outstanding afternoon for Rob Fromm. Another score to pass along. It's Stout and Whitewater all tied at 7-7. That's a fourth quarter score, State University Conference. Pointers here now. With Arashgosh, second and five from the 40. And they'll give a quick hitter to Fromm once again, and he's got running room. Nice tackle. Dantoin with a nice tackle. Excellent tackle because you don't you don't bring a back like Rob Fromm down one on one in the open field too often. That'll be enough for a first down. That'll put him up around 184 yards now. There's that same play, the quick opener off the right side that uh, he has picked up most of his yardage today, and there also is the good tackle by Greg Dantoin. And you have to get him at the line of scrimmage. If you don't get him, he seems to pick up speed and becomes three times as dangerous once he's in the second. And it's a first and ten now from the 33 for Oshka. And the quick hitter again gets for about three yards down to the 29-yard line. And we said that the only thing that really could get Oshkosh back in this ball game would be to break off a long run or two. And here they are knocking a deep inside pointer territory. And I'll tell you, Rob Fromm is getting a workout. He carried that ball again. But again, the clock is running. And again, you have to remember they are, they are two scores short. Of course, you always have the onside kick, and uh, the game becomes very exciting then. And it's a second and seven from 30 for us guys. Jeff Peterson over center calling the signals. Here's an option. And it won't go anywhere. Maybe a yard loss. And it doesn't go anywhere because Craig Ewald came through from that defensive end slot to hit the quarterback and make the stop. Excellent defensive play. Yeah, this Ewald is a very, very... Uh, quick-footed person out there. He plays a good eight. job on uh, any first. play out to his side. He's got the depth and the penetration. There he is finishing off the play. He did a nice job of fighting off a blocker just to get to the outside, let alone make the stop. Well, a good the afternoon watch. for Ewald and a couple of the other defensive players. Uh, we've been calling their names a lot today. It's going to be tough to select the defensive player of this game. Third and nine for Oshkosh. Peterson will throw. Wide open. And it's intercepted by Dantoin. Off the hands. Should have been caught. But you just keep waiting for Greg Dantoin to make an interception. That makes number 15 in 17 college games. You can't beat that. He's averaging one per year. That's the sixth interception this year. This one does happen to be tipped because the receiver was wide open. The ball just a little bit thrown high. But there's Dantoin coming up with that interception. And that ball went off Steve Reeson's hands. So. Right place, right time. So with... 4.36 to go in this game. Pointers are leading by 10. We'll be back with the final. Just a Why buy a copy when you can have the original? Yes, IBM has a new electronic typewriter. It's called the Action Writer 1. And guess what? IBM doesn't make it. It's made by Adler. The IBM Action Writer is supposed to be essentially the same as the Adler Satellite 3, except the Adler Satellite 3 costs less. When IBM bought a typewriter, they bought an Adler. Shouldn't you? See the Adler typewriters now at Hadley Office Products, South River Drive, Wausau. Over the years, Wisconsin has seen more than 80 small hometown breweries come and go, and with them, a lot of hometown beers. One small Wisconsin brewery is still making a great tasting hometown beer just for Wisconsin. Point special, with a taste so special, it's been rated best in the nation. Share the great taste of a Wisconsin original. Point special. Okay, who's here from Wisconsin? Here on the replay, you're going to see quarterback uh, Jeff Peterson trying to hit number 29, Steve Reeson, out of the backfield right over the middle. The ball a little bit overthrown, and there's Greg Dantoin to make the big stop. 
And so the pointers take over, go straight up the middle. With four and a half minutes left in the game, gain of about oh, a yard or two. Now we're going to see them take a page out of the uh, Oshkosh Titan playbook and just run the ball up in the uh, guard, up in the tackle, and let that clock run on and down. You know, we were commenting earlier about uh, Oshkosh when they're passing. It seems that they throw passes on third down when everybody in the ballpark knows they're throwing. That makes it much more difficult to execute. I think in that particular case, throwing on the second down would have been a much uh, more intelligent approach. I think they're so committed to running that veer that they sometimes uh, make poor choices as to when they really are going to make the pass. You know, the tail of wags the tiger, you know. I didn't know that, too. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this game of football, you can really get knowledgeable. <laughs> you bet. Okay. Now we're down to 352 left in this game and uh, delay a game on the pointers, although it did uh, run down the clock. It's still going to cost them five yards and put them back in a hole. I think the pointers would uh, just love to get maybe one, two first downs here, and, and that would be about it because uh, it's just not going to let Oshkosh any time to get back in it. And it will be a second and 12 for Baumgartner and the pointers. Backed up on their own eight yard line. Baumgartner's going to throw the ball. Looks over the middle, gets sacked at the five. Didn't have much time. Give credit to Oshkosh. Good rush. Really, not, not too bad a choice, I don't think, either, there by Craig Baumgartner. He didn't have anybody open, and rather than risk the interception, I think he made the wise choice and uh, went down uh, right there. Yeah, you see Benji Wright come in here, and he's read the play all along. He, uh, he's going right at the quarterback. He's had a good afternoon. Yeah. We've called Benji Vite a lot this afternoon. Benji Vite. He really seems to enjoy that uh, Blitzer Red Dog situation from the outside, and he does it very well. He enjoys it a lot more than Baumgartner does, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and it puts him in a third and 16 now from the five-yard line. you got to be careful here. You don't want to give him back the ball. And Baumgartner's in that shotgun from the end zone. He's going to throw long down sideline, almost just over the head of Crispin. Boy, and he wasn't too far off from making a connection there either. Just a matter of a foot or so. He's going to make a delicate punting situation now for Dantoin. Here we'll see uh, the pointers throwing out of their own end zone. Uh, plenty of time to throw the ball. And he's looking for a Chrisman right down the near sideline, but overthrew him by just a little bit. Again, you, you think about that little bit of a low snap to start the whole play. He has to bend way over, and I think that takes some of his timing off. Look where Dan Dantoin is standing at the Don't back of that end zone. Got to be touchy. Snap's got to be right there, and it is. And he gets it off. They got to give. Uh... We're going to have a roughing the kicker, I believe. Well, they needed the ball, and they were gambling. Dantoin, kick down. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure here. Five yards. I'm not sure here who the pointer snapper is on the punts. Maybe we could pick up a number on the replay here. Uh, I guess we're not going to be able to, but you are going to see that Dan Toyn is roughed right there by well, number 45. It looks like uh, Whiteman, Robert Whiteman, could have held up there rather easy rather than running into Dan Toyn. As I was mentioning, we'd like to give some credit to that snapper for the pointers. I'll tell you, he gets that ball back to that kicker very, very fast and has been very, very accurate all day. Well, the Wisconsin Badgers did play a fine game down in Iowa City against the Hawkeyes, 10th ranked Hawkeyes, but come up on the short end 17-6 again Wisconsin having some problem getting the football in the end zone a couple of field goals today you know very good choice on the part of the pointers here to refuse the running into the kicker penalty they, they got a good punt the ball's on the 46 yard line and it's going to take quite a bit of effort on the part of the Titans to get a score on this yeah rather than risk uh, another punt and have it get blocked that time Oshkosh now first down in the 46 yard line Peterson will throw. Looks long over the middle. Nice grab by Linaberry. I believe that might be one of the first couple of catches he's had today, if not the first. Excellent thrown ball by Jeff Peterson. Uh, he faked that time to the, uh, the prom. We'll see him fake the prom, the first man through here to hold up the linebackers. Just a second. Drops back three, four more steps and then hits Linneman right over the middle and Scott Nikolai hauls him down. Big play for the Titans. Keeps him very much alive. We're down to 230. Left in the game. And it looks like Oshkosh, a little more confusion here, and they're taking a time out. There is again the pass to Linderberry. Uh, ball thrown very, very well inside, away from the defensive back. Other members of the athletic Well, Oshkosh not wanting to make a crucial to mistake it. here. They have to score in this possession and do uh, it quickly. And, uh, rather than Jim players McCall. not knowing what's going on, uh, they decide to take a time out and talk it over because this is a big series. Point leading at 17-7. We're at exactly two and a half minutes to go in this ballgame. 
I would think it's got to be a little bit of a satisfying game as far as Ron Cardo is concerned. Uh, we talked that coming in here, they were definitely a decided underdog, that the pointers had things rolling offensively and had been playing real well defensively, too, and, and Oshkosh has stayed with them for the whole ballgame. I'm sure he's seen a lot of things uh, he's liked this afternoon, especially uh, the running of Rob Fromm. He sure impressed us again, Cal, and we talked to him about being a very patient coach. Totally understanding the situation and knowing he wasn't going to win a great many ball games, but you've got to, before you build that house, establish a firm foundation, and that's what he's trying to do. And it's a first and ten now from the 30. For Oshkosh, and Peterson will throw again. Throws over the middle and again hits his man for about a 14-yard gain. Good tying pass again. This time it's John O'Fleur with the catch. And Oshkosh in their hurry-up offense as the clock running. Again, what they're doing is throwing the ball on a slant pattern over the middle. And we mentioned that earlier, that in the first half he was trying to throw down and out, but the middle is open, and he's now taking that. Greg Dantoin is laying on the ground right there. Here he yeah. comes off the field. I think he took a blow into the jaw area from the helmet of the receiver that time. And he gets a nice hand from this big Stevens Point crowd this afternoon on homecoming. Glad you're with us at home. Kind of a dreary day out here, but the rain did hold off. And it's been a great afternoon for football, and could be even better if the pointers hold on here and get a victory. But Oshkosh is threatening right now, 17-7. They trail and have the ball. Peterson almost falls, keeps his balance. His grab still throws. And incomplete, just out of the end zone. That was close. Boy, that was an excellent effort by the uh, wide receiver here. Uh, John LaFleur, it, he tried very, very hard to keep his feet in bounds. And Jeff Peterson, watch him as he's throwing the ball here. You know, at this stage of the game with Jeff LaFleur out there, you're going to have to double cover him, I think. Uh, he's, he's, he's tremendous all by himself. Look how hard he tried to work to keep those feet in bounds, but they just were out. Well, he was on the white, but... And 2-12 now, that stops the clock in favor of Oshkosh anyway, and they have a second and 10 from the 15. Slam pattern over the middle. That's what they're successful. Again, Peterson gets a good block, throws it over the middle, but a little bit high, and Linneberry not able to come down with it, so it goes incomplete and brings up a third down 10. Well, he obviously saw that he wasn't going to catch the ball, and what he did is he made, he made a little tangle with his own feet and fell down, hoping he might get a uh, call from the uh, back judge. You're also going to see two uh, defenders back there for the pointers. You mentioned the double coverage on the wide receiver, and that's what they've got right here. 24 is Scott Nikolai, and 21 for the pointers is Dan Hilliker. Just a reminder, the UW-Stevens Point football game is being brought to you by the restaurant inside the center headquarters, the restaurant in Stevens Point. And a big third down and 10 now as Peterson has time Almost a great catch. Almost a great catch down there. Not almost, almost a great catch, but also a great defensive right. effort by Scott Nikolai to knock that ball away. I thought he had the best chance at the ball. Nikolai was back in the end zone, and he really, uh, he spotted it early, and he, as soon as the ball was thrown, he played the ball instead of the man. I think he knew he did not have a chance for an interception, but he just didn't want to make, he wanted to make sure they didn't catch the ball, so he knocked it away. Well, it comes down to a uh, fourth down. And 10. Here's the replay oh, once again. And just watch Nikolai kick with his right hand to just knock the ball out of the hands of the receiver. Well, this will be the game for the Titans right here on a fourth down and 10. And Peterson obviously back to throw, and he's getting pressure from the... And Andrew throws it. He'll go incomplete, and the pointers have held. Tremendous pressure there by Tommy Finko, number 44, number uh, 48 for the pointers, also coming in very, very hard. John Lund. Lund. There's one other player there. I lost the number. But again, he's dropping back here, and he's getting tremendous pursuit from the offside. And just under throws. So Stevens Point will take over, and I'd say in good position right now to even their overall record at 3-3 three and three and go 2-1 and one in a conference. They really have made some tremendous strides from since the going 0-3 at the beginning of the season against some real tough opponents. And you know, that, talking to D.J. Leroy, that uh, preseason opponents he had did only help his team, even though they didn't win. They, that kind of competition can only help. You know, the big thing was the pointers went down to the, some of these places, uh, Cal, against the tough non-conference and played well. They lost, but they played well. I think they gained a, a great sense of self-respect, and they knew coming into the WSUC that they were going to have a good ball club. 
and at times have uh, looked a little flat today on offense, uh, but then came out and Baumgartner with some quick passes over the middle and uh, were able to put 17 points on the board fairly. I think anytime you're playing, I think anytime you're playing a lot of young people, again, the freshman quarterback, you're going to have those periods of, of, of when you're not playing real well and when you're going to make mistakes, but you've got to keep them to a minimum, and they really have done that. Well, uh, some great camera work by our fellows today, and uh, thank all of them. And also, there's our uh, mobile camera on the side uh, with Michael Martin. It's from uh, Rose Murphy Toyota. And Michael Martin, our uh, photographer on that truck, uh, might say he's been kind of enjoying the ride all afternoon up and down the sideline, kind of following the ball, and that mobile camera on that pickup truck is provided by a Rosemurgy Toyota Schofield and a uh, great place to go buy a Toyota truck from Rosemurgy Toyota Schofield thank you very much and again I'll bet she's very thankful that the rain held off I think all our workers out here are <laughs> just because we're in the booth I guess that <laughs> doesn't mean we didn't care well I think Greg you said you didn't care for rain I don't know what you mean <laughs> All right, the pointers now will try to run off the clock. It's second down and eight. And Oshkosh, uh, I don't believe they have any more timeouts left, so the clock is going to continue to run. That'll bring up a third and about nine for Stevens Point, but at this point in the game, clock goes against Oshkosh. May get a chance for one or two more plays, and that'll be about it. Some of the fans starting to leave Kirky Field here today just to uh, tell you again what a crowd. 5,500, the biggest football crowd ever here at Kirky Field. And they're going to see a pointer homecoming victory. As they just go straight ahead to uh, keep the clock going, now under a minute. It'll be fourth down, and they'll boot the ball away. Give Oshkosh maybe a play or two. Well, that's about all they're going to get. Uh, the clock continues to run at uh, 49 seconds, and the pointers are going to take all the time they possibly can. Possibly even take a delay of game penalty. Uh, make sure they use it all up, because it, it really doesn't make much difference right now. And Dan Toyn back to do the punting with 30 seconds to go. Stevens Point uh, pretty much got, has this one in the bag, and Dan Toyn gets the punt away. Again, a wobbler, and Fromm will... Let it bounce. Now pick it up and uh, goes down. Oh, there's a lead hit. Yeah. Yes. Late call, but it was a late, late hit. Late call, but a late hit, yes. So they'll take a few more yards on. You hate to see that at this stage of the game. It's just exuberance and a little bit too much enthusiasm there. You can't quite hold up. White huddle up. White huddle up, man. Let's go. Here you go. He's uh, clearly down. And there's the late hit. Uh, again, what you hate to see. And that's Rob Fromm back there, that outstanding running back, and he certainly has had a busy day and a long day, and I'm sure he's going to be very tired and probably quite sore now, and this certainly doesn't help. Personal foul! First foul! First down! So we'll see Yashkosh air it out a little bit here in the last couple of plays of the game. Actually, 19 seconds left to yeah, try and like, get on the board. Looks like the Rylander Hodag is here. <laughs> Is that thing alive? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we should let Jim Brown talk about that. He seems to know a lot about animals. The tail of the tiger or whatever. I uh, it used to remind me of you know, who's in charge. <laughs> and Peterson will, uh, the quick shuffle pass didn't fool the pointers at all, and that won't go anywhere. And it fires up the defense a little bit. First time we've seen that play today. It certainly has become a popular play in colleges nowadays and usually run with quite a bit of success. Well, we saw the Cincinnati Bengals run it quite often against Green Bay last weekend. And the last play of the game. And it's almost intercepted to end the ball game. And that is a final here from Gerke Field in Stevens Point, where the pointers have improved their record to two and one and three and three overall. The Pointers beat UW Oshkosh this afternoon at homecoming 17-7. A grand hotel like the St. Gregory is a city unto itself, filled with fascinating people. Husbands, wives, lovers, some of the nicest people, and some of the strangest. Just like the people where you live. Is, um, is that a friend of yours? Arthur Haley's Hotel. 
Then to find out the latest about the people in the Wausau area... Watch Newsline 9, the news leader. Take a family raised by their older brother and his new wife. Add an uncle with opinions of his own. Hey, hey, people eat in here. Mix together a dash of confusion. Hi, everybody, guess what? Shorts are on fire. And a heap of understanding. You're doing just great as a father. Yeah? As a brother, you could use some work. What you get is Danny Thomas in One Big Family. Check it out. Great idea. Sundays at 5 on TV9. Cal Ehlers back at Gertie Field along with Greg Wendorf and Jim Brown. And gentlemen, if you were to go home and tell someone about this game today, how the pointers played, uh, what exactly would you say? Well, I think I'd have to talk about the uh, quarterback. I, I'm just tremendously impressed with Mr. Baumgartner. I think the key of the game was when he went to the outside and created options. Uh, in the second half, I saw that when they needed a score, they did do that. I don't know if they're uh, looking at a lot of the scouts in the stands or what they're doing uh, down the road for the rest of the conference, but it seemed they didn't want to show that once they had the lead, and they only used it when they were necessary. I agree. I, I think uh, uh, Kirk Bumgarner is going to be an outstanding quarterback. He's, he's made some good progress. He, you can see he's getting a little more intelligent, so to speak, uh, as he progresses, and this is only his third ball game as a freshman here. I, I thought the real key today, as much as it was him, might have been Ted Blanco, the tight end, who did an excellent job of receiving, and Mike Christman. I thought Mike Christman played an excellent all-around ball game. Didn't have a lot of yards running the ball, but he made some big catches, made a, a big uh, jarring tackle uh, down here after the ball had been intercepted to give it back to the pointers. I just thought he played a real good game for that offense, too. And on the other side of the field, Ron Cardo, the third-year head coach at Oshkosh, has to be somewhat pleased you never like to lose a game, but I think they were impressive, met uh, many points in this game. Well, I think Fromm is the key. I, I, I don't know how many yards he ended up with, but we know that he had at least 180 yards, and he did everything you asked him to do. He broke the big play uh, twice. He had uh, 68 yards for a touchdown, I believe, and, and yet they still didn't get but seven points on the board. I think that has to say a little bit of, uh, about their offensive strategy. They're going to have to put the ball in the air over the middle earlier in the game and sort of mix things up. I think if there's one thing that would uh, concern D.J. Leroy a little bit, it was the inconsistency of his offense today. Well, that's been his problem, I think, uh, their problem, I should say, probably since the season began, is they have been inconsistent at times. But that's going to happen when you're as young as they are. And every game, Kirk Baumgartner is going to get better, and uh, there are going to be some games where they're going to need to score a lot more points than they did today on a Oshkosh team that uh, hasn't been scoring a lot of points. But the pointers did get the job done today, and standing by with a happy head coach, D.J. Leroy, is Rick Mall. Rick? Thanks a lot, Cal, and we do have head coach D.J. Leroy with us. Coach, this was a hard-fought ball game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, both teams were very balanced, and uh, we never really got any great field position, and establishing an 80-yard drive was tough to do against their defense. You were commenting to the ball players after the game, teamwork. This was a whole team effort, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, the offense certainly didn't dominate. The defense did enough to hold them out of the end zone. They had a couple breakaway runs, which, which hurt us, but uh, overall, it was a team, uh, team effort, and nice on a homecoming. What about the play of Kurt Baumgartner? This is the third game he has started. He has consistently now led the team for three straight victories. Um, is he continuing to get better? We think so. Uh, he seems very calm and collective out there. He's done the job that we asked him to do. I hope he continues to improve and get better. And we're lucky we found him early and, and happy to have him here. Great crowd here today, over 5,000 for homecoming. It's nice to have uh, alumni come back, and especially to win. You know, a year ago, we gave one up 28-24 uh, to Whitewater, and that hurt. And a lot of the players remember that. And uh, coming back and, and winning is, was great. That first play of the second half, I thought they were going to hold the momentum, and we came back and scored, and that's what we needed to do. All right, congratulations on a big win. Thank you very much. All right, head coach DJ Leroy. Now let's go back upstairs to Cal. All right. Thank you, Rick. And uh, there were some big plays in this game, and uh, obviously Rod Fromm for Oshkosh uh, with a lot of them, but also uh, some unusual plays, I think, <laughs> on the double interception where Radke had a chance to uh, carry the ball, and it, it was a play you had to see. It's hard to hear it is, as a matter of fact. And uh, I think we commented earlier on this play that the ball is uh, a little bit overthrown here as Baumgartner had been throwing it well all day. You can see it wobble in the air. 
it's picked off, but then you've just got to wait for Mike Chrisman to come from the left here to jar the ball away to Ratke for the interception or whatever you want to call it. And there's the <laughs> offensive dream, right? The and offensive he, line he, I, dream. I like the way he tucks the ball, though, and he's ready to go. <laughs> and I mean, he held that ball in the right arm. He too. shifted into the left arm, and he was playing the opposition off on the right. He's going to go into that huddle in the locker room and say, I want a game ball. <laughs> Coach, it's time for me to go on offense. All right, and a uh, great game by freshman Kirk Baumgartner this afternoon, throwing for over 300 yards on the day, completing 19 of 35 passes. Standing by with him on the sideline is Rick Mall again. Rick? Thanks a lot, Cal. And Kurt, I don't know if you know this or not, but you threw for over 300 yards today. Uh, pretty good day, huh? Yeah, it was. It was a pretty good day. Uh, the receivers were wide open. I just had to put the ball in there. Mm -hmm. This is your third straight start. Um, do you feel comfortable getting into the starting role now? It's getting more comfortable with each start, and uh, to play the uh, upperclassmen really helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. What about the future, uh, about this, this ball club? Today was a total team effort. This was a tough uh, Oak, uh, Oshkosh ball club. Definitely. It was a great team effort, and defense, offense, puts, put, put, put it together, and we come out on top. All right. Congratulations on a win. Thank you. Kurt Baumgartner. Now let's go back upstairs to Cal. All right, thanks much, Rick, and it was a great game for freshmen, and we've talked before, all that can do is give him a lot more confidence and make him all the better. And it is a final score this afternoon from Gerke Field, 17-7, UW-Stevens Point. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. The News Leader Advantage. When you want breaking news, Newsline 9's news team is there for you. Photographer Joe Hack was on the scene when a rural Marathon County home burned to the ground. Newsline 9 was the only area news team in Westfield when the second tragedy in a week struck that small community. Only Newsline 9 told you how a Tomahawk cross-country runner did not let a bullet end his career. Watch the team that's leading the way. Newsline 9, the news leader. Hi there, folks. It's 4x4 time at Rose Murphy's October Rodeo of number one rated Toyotas. First in resale value, reliability, and safety on the highway, according to 1986 Consumer Reports. We'll rustle up some fine bargains for you at our South Grand Avenue Corral. Hit the trail to Rosemurgy Toyota and round up a tough Toyota truck today. Looking for trucks? Good news. Rosemurgy's got them. Again, look. And again, the pointers managing only two touchdowns this afternoon. Maybe somewhat of a disappointment, but give credit to the Oshkosh defense. And, uh, one of the touchdowns, uh, you know, came early in the game, and uh, you added a field goal by Kim Drake, uh, three points, so it was a 17-7 final. And the pointers, I think, could have put a few more points on the board, or were expected to maybe this afternoon. Had they been a little bit more consistent, they very well might have done that, but they played a, a good all-around ball game. I think another thing that has to be brought in is the, is the offensive line did an excellent job, but they also made some key mistakes with holding penalties at various times that interrupted the scoring marches. Uh, and there was a lot of inconsistency today, and uh, we saw Kurt Baumgartner look good at times, and uh, I think D.J. Leroy is happy with that standpoint because he is a freshman, but again, you're right, the consistency wasn't there. You know, you need the running plays to mix in with the passing play. You can't put all the pressure on that freshman quarterback. All And I, I think if we have an MVP today on offense, it has to go to uh, Ted Blanco. Well, I would think so. He caught some big pla uh, passes today, especially that last one for a touchdown that was so very important to the pointers. Here we're going to see... Baumgartner rolling out to his right with that option of running or throwing, and then he just drills the ball to Ted Blanco for the big touchdown as Ted makes a nice sliding uh, reception there to give him the 17 points and the difference in the ballgame. Exactly. That pretty much sealed things for Stevens Point this afternoon as they pick up their third win of the season, go to 3-3. Three and three. And gentlemen, looking at some of the uh, statistics of this game briefly, just as we mentioned, an outstanding game by Rod Fromm. He would have to be the uh, player of the game on offense. Well, well he, he carried the ball 21 times for 182 yards, and uh, it just seems that he was the, the Oshkosh total offense today. On the other hand, I think uh, Greg mentioned earlier, uh, Christmas. Well, he rushed the ball 17 times for 76 yards. He also caught four passes for 65 yards, so he had a fine game, too. Plus, he had a great tackle. He oh. sure did. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so that wraps things up from Gerke Field this afternoon. The Stevens Point Pointers on homecoming beating UW Oshkosh 17-7. Thank you at home for joining us this afternoon. From Gerke Field in Stevens Point, I'm Cal Ehlers, along with Greg Wendorf and Jim Brown. Good afternoon. You've been watching WSQC Football, live from Gerke Field in Stevens Point. This TV9 sports exclusive has been brought to you by The Restaurant, an American bounty of food.
the restaurant inside Century Headquarters, Stevens Point. Hadley Office Products, your office equipment headquarters, located one block west of the Wausau Center on River Drive in Wausau. And by Point Special Beer, a special beer you're proud to share. Brewed to perfection in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. This has been a presentation of TV9 Sports. you believe it? A complete bookcase waterbed, just $18 per month, and the first year interest-free. Yes, it's true, but don't be confused by the competition. This offer is good only at Harns Furniture and Waterbeds of Wausau and Spencer. $18 per month includes the complete package, plus the mattress with 15-year warranty and the heater with 4-year warranty, plus one-year interest-free financing on purchases of $240 or more. Does not apply to previous sales. Only at Harns Furniture and Waterbed, North Merrill Avenue, Wausau, and Highway 13 in Spencer. Replacement windows by CertainTeed keep you warmer in winter, cooler in summer. CertainTeed solid vinyl windows. Outstanding thermal efficiency with virtually no maintenance. Clean them from the inside, feel more secure, and they never need painting inside or out. Every window is custom made for your home and backed by the good housekeeping seal. You'll find any style you need with CertainTeed. Available at Home Comfort Marshfield, Northwoods Windows, Wisconsin Rapids, Badgerland Windows, Stevens Point, and Wausau Windows, Wausau. It's your million-dollar chance of a lifetime, weekdays on TV9. Siskel and Ebert review Whoopi Goldberg in a spy caper called Jumpin' Jack Flash. Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster are ex-cons returning to crime in Tough Guys. William Hurt falls in love with a deaf woman in Children of a Lesser God. And jazz man Dexter Gordon is an American in Paris in Round Midnight. It's all coming up next on Siskel and Ebert and the Movies. <laughs> You do not need any more trouble. It defeats your own purpose. Yes, yes. I'll be there in a sec. And then we're going to go to Cole's after, right? Yes. I promise. Now hurry. This is Whoopi Goldberg, who had a remarkable movie debut in The Color Purple, and now plays a computer operator in her second film, a comedy thriller named Jumpin' Jack Flash. And that's one of four new movies we'll be reviewing this week, along with a couple of new releases in the video stores. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. Jumpin' Jack Flash is an easy movie to review. It contains a...
there's another room in here. Nice layout. You sure this babe's as rich as you think? She's loaded. Now move it. We gotta work fast before she gets back. You uh, wanna grab a table read? I'll be right with you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you, Dorian. Oh, nice to see you, John. Uh, John, uh, this is Herb Callis, and Herb, this is John Russell. Well, how do you do? You're the uh, district attorney here, aren't you? Yes. Yes, indeed he is. He also just happens to be my ex-husband. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, of course, is the hero who saved my life in the parking lot. Oh, is that this? Well, I've heard about you. It's nice to meet you. Well, thank you. Listen, uh, nice meeting you. Enjoy your dinner, huh? Yes, and the very, very same to you. <laughs> Good looking. I guess that figures, so. though. I mean, you'd never let an average joke save you from a mugger. Oh, well, the main thing is that I'm alive. He is rather mysterious, though, and I wonder why he didn't introduce us to his friend. What's the difference? Oh, nothing, really. One life to live will continue in a moment. If you are not giving your sandwich French's mustard, it may not like it. No! That's not French's. Come on, listen to your food. French's is 100% all natural. Be good to your food. If spending your time cleaning the toilet bullies you, oh, your bowl with Swish. Swish's thick liquid cleans as it coats and leaves everything smelling fresh. If the drudgery of cleaning bullies you, oh, your bowl with Swish. Good morning. Breakfast in bed? Yeah, orange juice, blueberry muffins, and shed spread country crock. Country crock? Uh-huh. Okay, what's the catch? I just thought you'd enjoy that rich, buttery taste. Mmm, an offer I can't refuse. Ah, one taste of country crock and she melts like butter. <laughs> shed spread country crock. Fewer calories than regular margarine and no cholesterol. Enjoy the rich, buttery taste of country crock. Thanks for the delicious breakfast. Sure. Now, come on, what do you want? Who, me? Oh, just another muffin with country crock. <laughs> really? <laughs> Now, perfect polished nails in seconds. Lee Press-On Nails in fashion colors. Press-On Color, no messy polish. Press-On Color, no drying time. Press-On Color, no chipping ever. Lee Press-On Nails in fashion colors. Everything you need for longer polished nails. Lee Super Stick Tabs and 20 Lee Press-On Nails in a variety of sizes. Available in a rainbow array of today's popular colors. So press-on. Lee Press-On Nails now in fashion colors. What's the new in fashion? We'll see some great jeweled accessories tomorrow. Also meet the new Playmate of the Year, and Tom Cruise tells about his new movie tomorrow on Good Morning America. Century means quality you can depend on, and every day. Because each Century store is dedicated to giving you value, a fair price, and the little extras that mean so much. Save throughout Century's meat department with USDA Choice Blade Chuck Roast, just 88 cents a pound. USDA Choice Chuck Steak, just 98 cents a pound. Tyson Grade A Cornish Game Hens, only $1.19 each. And Patrick Cudahy Bacon, on sale at $1.19 a pound. Century really brightens my day. Beryl Stell will give a free public lecture entitled Contribute to World Peace at First Church of Christ Scientist, Thursday, May 1st at 7.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Introducing Rumbles, bite-sized nuggets that are sweet and crunchy. Rumbles is sweet and crunchy. Rumbles nuggets are crispy puffs rolled in light sweet glaze. Crunchy nuts and all kinds of good things. Rumbles is sweet and crunchy. New Rumbles brand snack nuggets from Frito-Lay. Sweet and crunchy. Jeopardy! Today at 4 on Channel 5. You're Tina? Yes, come on in, please. Thanks. I'm so glad you came. I was afraid you'd lose your nerve. Well, I almost did. I drove by three times before I made up my mind. 
Have you seen a doctor? Uh, no, I'll be all right. The bruises usually go away in about a week or so. I'll, I'll get you a brandy. You know, it really took a lot of nerve to come here. You're really very brave. But I promise you, you are never going to have anything to be afraid of again. I am going to make sure of that. <sighs> Look, why don't we start by uh, you telling me your name? Scarlet Forrest. Scarlet, why don't you uh, have a seat, okay? Uh, Scarlet, does your husband know you've gone? No, I ran out before he came back. I didn't even bother packing, I just ran. Did he follow you? No, but I'm still afraid that he'll find me. No, no, he won't, I promise you, you are safe here. But, but, but what's gonna happen now? What do I do tomorrow? Do I hop on a bus to some hick town and become a waitress? I ran because I couldn't take it anymore. But I still love him, Tina. Nobody understands that. I know, but you took the first step, which is to protect yourself. That's the most important thing here. And the second step that we have to do is we have to call the police. No. No, I already know one policeman who was on your side, Lieutenant Garrison. He's the one that did the investigation. Yes, but he can't do anything, Scarlett, unless you get rid of this stupid story about falling off the ladder. Now, if you tell him the truth, he can help you. He can get you into a shelter, and he can see that you and Frank both get therapy. You make it sound so simple. That's not the way it is. If Frank is arrested, they won't keep him for long. He'll never get therapy. He'll just come after me. And the next time, who knows? <laughs> Scarlett, look, we've got to break that cycle. He doesn't mean to hurt me, Tina. He just loses his temper. He doesn't have control of himself. I can't believe you're making excuses for him. Well, he loves me. Afterwards, he always acts like some little wounded puppy. Yeah, but he's not the one who's wounded. You are. Well, that's why I've got to find somebody to help both of us. Oh, I'm so scared and confused. Maybe I should just go home now before he comes back. No, Scarlett, please wait. Don't. Don't look. You found this far. You have to finish this up. You have to. Look, if, if you can't see that Frank has to get psychiatric help, then the police will help him get it. They'll even find you a place to stay. Oh, I can't go to the Landview Women's Shelter. He'll find me there. Okay, then we'll take you to the shelter in the next county. I'll even take you there myself. We'll get you an assumed name. An assumed name? Like what? Tiffany? You better spell this whole thing out for me. Who are you doing this investigation for? Well, I'm, that has to remain confidential. Uh, it's a very concerned party over here. You see, at the time of your sister's death, there were rumors that it was an accident. And if she was murdered, well, we want to find the killers and bring them to justice. I've been waiting for that for a long time. Gloria and I were very close, John. I knew it wasn't an accident. Do you know of any crime figure she was involved with? She always denied it, but I'm certain she had an affair with this guy, Al Dyson. I begged her to call it off, and I know she tried to, but she was in too deep. The story was, she walked out on him. A week later, she was run down by a car. Uh, what about the name Pete O'Neill? You know that name? He's running for DA, right? Yeah, but I mean in connection with your sister. Nothing as far as I know. You're sure, Reed? I mean, I've got reason to think that there was some relationship between the two of them. Lori never said anything about... Unless... Well, I don't know. And I don't recall her actually mentioning any names, but... The week before she was killed, she said she was afraid for someone. Not herself, but someone she loved. I never found out who it was. My feeling is, if we can win strong grassroots support and raise a couple of issues that really excite the people, I may... I mean, stand at least half a chance against all that Buchanan money. I need to have a fundraiser, though. I might even rent out this place for the night. Pleasant, food's not bad, up-to-date sort of place. Of course, I can't amount to it. You rented the entire restaurant for the evening? How else can I be sure of having you all to myself? But it must have been awfully expensive. Well, let's just say someone owed me a favor. The important thing is, we're alone. I'm surprised by you. Really, I would have thought you'd rather be with a woman who was somewhat younger than yourself. Someone who wants to talk movies and rock stars? No, Dorian. 
I prefer a real woman. Someone who is more serious and mature. Someone who understands a man. What he feels. What his needs are. It's you, Dorian. I want you. And then if I don't win, I figure I'll just jump off the top of the state office building. Be very nice. Of course, the gun might be quicker. A gun and the state office building? What are you talking about? You just okayed my suicide. What? Oh, I'm so sorry. I uh, I did lose focus there because I've, I've suddenly developed this terrible headache. Would you mind awfully if we went home? Oh, we've hardly touched your dinner. I've, I've lost my appetite. The company? Not at all. It just it came on rather suddenly, oh. and I would be better off at home. Well, of course, darling. Of course. Waiter. I just picked this up from the bedroom. Let's split. Something tells me there's a bigger hall around here. We'll take another look around. I trust Woolite. Woolite helps keep things fresh and beautiful. Woolite. And you. Trust Woolite Fine Fabric Wash. Let's ride! Gotta clean my oven. Why use those? Easy Off is 40% faster. Grease penetrating Easy Off oven cleaner does the hard work for you. 40% faster. Beautiful. Easy Off better because it's faster. Our life is a mess. I'm leaving you, Martha. Oh, Tom, please, you can't Sometimes leave. the dishes just have to sit till life's little tragedies are over. He's a beast. Yeah. And dishes that sit are tougher to clean. That's a beast. But only sunlight liquid has the juice of one whole lemon. Sunlight cuts the tough stuff loose, cuts baked on, caked on, stuck on food, <whistles> even grease. Now, Michael Drake. This guy's an animal. Destiny. Right. Sunlight with lemon juice cuts the tough stuff loose. Introducing Kodakolor VRG Film. We're all moving to a different rhythm. Our hearts are beating to a different drum. That's what keeps the whole world spinning. And that's what makes the whole world fun. Don't you know, we're all part of the color of life. The most accurate, realistic color in print film is here. New Kodakolor VRG. The color of life. I thought I told you to keep your nose out of my business! From what we read about you in the paper, you can't even handle your own family. What do you have to go button in the hours for, huh? Honey, you and I are going home now. Come on. Well, what do you want to take her home for, huh? Another beating, is that it? Look at her. This is the woman you're supposed to love. She is terrified of you. What? what do you want to see? How more bruises? You want to see some broken legs, some arms, maybe a couple weeks in the hospital? Why can't you mind your own business? Scarlet, baby. Honey, please, just, just come home with me. I didn't mean it. Don't listen to him, Scarlet. He's just going to do it all over again. I didn't mean it, Scarlet. You know I didn't mean it. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. You're all I've got. Honey, come on. 
I, my business is a rough. You know, I lost my job. I drink a little, I get nervous. That's all. Frank, I can't go on like this. I swear, it's all over. That's it. Never again. Please come with me now. All I want is to take care of you. Come look, on. Look, if you left her, you'd get some therapy. We don't need any therapy. Frank, you are kidding yourself, and you know it. I'm not kidding, am I, Scarlett? Tell her I'm not kidding. Well, you would. You just want to take her home so you can beat her up again. Why don't it? you butt out of this? No, the abuse has got to stop, and you got to stop it tonight. Listen, lady, nobody tells me what to do. Please, I am going to take her to a safe place. She's coming with me. But can't you see you need help? So what are you saying? I'm nuts, huh? You want to see how off the wall I can be? Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. you win. It was yeah. a good idea to come. <laughs> I can only fix so many leaky faucets. Come on, let's go. Hey, Joy. Hey, um, hi, you guys. Did we miss Chip's debut? What's up? Oh, yeah, he was a smash of New York, L.A., here he comes. <laughs> Goodbye. Wait, 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 you're not leaving alone, are you? Oh, yeah, Chip found some other company. Oh. Maybe I'll give Kathy a call, see what she's doing. Oh, have you seen her? Yeah, I did. She called while... Well, no, I haven't seen her. She called me, though, when she got back from Europe. How's she seen? She's kind of down. Maybe we'll deserve each other. Well, she didn't have to mention a guy named Kurt Stone, did you? What? Um, no. Was it somebody she met in Europe? No, no, no. It's not that important. Just some antique dealer who's hanging out asking questions about her. Don't worry about it. Hey, hey, guys, 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 guys. Hey, 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 hey. Hi. You, you missed the big debut. Yeah. Look at him over there signing autographs. Is he something or what? <laughs> Joy, you must be proud of him. Hey, yo. What? Sorry, you guys. Would you mind? I need to talk to you yeah. for a second. Excuse me, guys. You know, I spoke to Becky Lee Abbott that benefit for the Landview Hospital. Great, great. What'd she say? Well, she's dying to come up here and sing. She hasn't seen Landview in so long, but I'm warning you. She ain't gonna come cheap. It's okay. She's worth the price. Besides, it's for a good cause, and PR will not hurt us. Well, just make sure that you pay her agent directly. It's a bit unusual, isn't it? Oh, what the hell? I mean, it's straight 10%, right? 10%. Just make sure the name on the check reads Clover Wild. That's W-I-L-D. Clover, <laughs> you're acting as her agent. Well, just this once. I mean, heck, you know you couldn't have got her without me. You know, Clover, when I want to start hustling, I want you to give me lessons. Oh, Dan, oh Herb, they have. They've ran it back for Jen. Two of them are the worst. Oh, it's just laughing. Oh, why would anybody do this? They went through my bedroom, through the closet, through all the bureau drawers. Thank goodness, most of my drawers are going to take the closet. I cannot believe that. the real secret to great popcorn is by special kernel. Pops up lighter and fluffier. So when other microwave popcorns say they have the secret, I'd say let's compare them to my gourmet microwave popping corn. With my special kernels, you get more popcorn than with other national brands. I got their secret. What's that? Theirs just doesn't measure up to yours. <laughs> Orville Redenbacher, the first and last name in popcorn. Here in Hidden Valley, there's so much good food, it's not easy to count calories. The usual? Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't. Ah, but Sue Ann Tyler's in for a special treat. Salad mm. topped with that luscious, reduced-calorie dressing from Hidden Valley Ranch. Thick and creamy, but only 35 calories a tablespoon. Well, it's the next best thing to hot fudge. Just 35 <laughs> calories, but it tastes like a million, and the reason's clear. All the goodness of Hidden Valley Ranch is here. These two fine products from Upjohn are recommended most by doctors and pharmacists. Chaopectate for diarrhea, Cordaid for minor itches and rashes. Cordaid relieves itches and rashes caused by eczema, dermatitis, insect bites, poison ivy, and oak. Chaopectate is the diarrhea specialist, the only leading non-prescription medication created just for diarrhea. You have relief within 24 hours. Cordaid and Chaopectate from Upjohn, recommended most by doctors and pharmacists. And they're right. Every morning, discover your dreams on lifestyles of the rich and famous. And on all my children. If I have to live with you for the rest of my life, my feelings for Erica will not change. I want her. I love her. And I love you, Jeremy. 
and on General Hospital. What's my time? Ravishingly beautiful blondes with long hair. It's too bad there isn't one of those around here. Oh, you move. All my children, General Hospital. They're gone. I gotta call the police. Oh, no, Herb, no. What's the use? They'll, they'll just ask a lot of questions, they'll sympathize, and then they'll mark the file incomplete. You have to report it. Have no, to. Herb, really. The police will come, the thieves are already gone. The, the, you know who'll be here? The press. There'll be, there'll be questions, there'll be photographs, and I just can't go through any but of that. Darling, the only hope we have of finding them is if we get on it right now. So I'll just call I'll call report it tomorrow, all right? I promise. How do you suppose they got in? Apparently through the service entrance. I, 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 I just checked it. Oh, Somebody no. didn't uh, lock the inside bolt. My fault. I didn't... What? I didn't lock the bolt. Oh. When Emma left for the evening. Oh, I can't believe... I also didn't turn on the burglar alarm. Oh, Herb. Herb. Okay, it's my fault. Uh, did, you, did you lock? Oh, oh yes, honey. Right. Don't, don't, don't worry. There's no way anybody can get back in. All right, I'll be Safe. fine. I will. Yes, you're right. Good. And uh, after all, look at the bright side. The necklace they took was not all that valuable. It was insured. Everything's insured, for that matter. And, uh, you know, I'll replace everything and uh, or live without it. You're blasé about that. I am not blasé. I am no, terribly no. upset. But, I mean, I've been through this sort of thing before, and there's very little the police can do, you know, unless they oh. catch the burglars red-handed. Honey, honey, would you like it if I spent the night here? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be nice, I'll yes. I'll be glad to. Good, good. You could be a little safer. Um, what? No, uh, on, on second thought, no, it's, n never mind, it's well, not I, necessary. I, I don't mind, it's all right. No, really, uh, didn't you say something about having a, a, a campaign meeting tonight? Well, we schedule it, that's all. No, <laughs> don't Sweetie, I don't want to leave you alone. No, 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 your campaign meeting, believe me, is a lot more important than hanging around here holding my hands. Well, and all I truly want to do is kick off these shoes, get between the covers, and just put this whole incident out of my Donna, mind until tomorrow sure? morning. I am positive. Yeah, now, you go along to the meeting. Well, all right, but I'm going to check back with you as soon as I get there, okay? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. but I'm sure I'll be just fine. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call you anyway, and if you change your mind, I'd be glad to come back. Donna, that will not be necessary, I'm sure, but thank you for the offer. Okay. Uh, now, you're going to bolt, bolt the locks when I leave the door, aren't you? Yes, yes, I promise okay. I will. Promise. Okay. Good night, baby. Good night. I don't need the police. What I need is a really good private detective. I'm not frightening you, neither is Scarlet, right? Scarlet knows her place, don't you, Miss? No. Now you're gonna learn yours! No. Stop it! If you lay one hand on her, Frank, I'll let you have it, I swear! What? I mean it, Frank! You put that down and you'll regret it the rest of your life! doing anything. I just came to pick up my wife. This, this woman attacked me. I just came. She was filling her head full of bull. Tell him, Scarlett. I just tell him. I just came to pick you up. Isn't that right? Scarlett, isn't that right? No. Frank's the one that did this to me. He's been beating me for years. He needs help. Doesn't. She's confused. She, uh, She's lying. No, she it's fell down. Stop, Frank. Don't you understand that? I can't live like this. Neither one of us can. Is this the way you want to see me in cuffs? Oh, I hate it, Frank. I must be sick for letting it go on all these years. No, Scarlett. No. You really were trapped, don't you see? You couldn't find your way out till tonight. You gave me the strength. I'll never forget you. Neither will I. Come on, let's go. Oh, 
Oh, it breaks my heart to see him like that. He didn't have a lot of sympathy for you, Scarlett. No, he did. In his own confused way. Nobody understands that except Tina. Why don't you let me drive you to the station? No, Lee, you've done enough. I would like to talk to you, though, sometime, try and figure out what I'm going to do next. Scarlett, you can talk to me whenever you want and as much as you want. But I think the most important thing here is for you to get some counseling. Thank you for everything. You were very brave. How will I ever repay you? For being strong. And by starting a new life. And if you'll take my advice, you won't let Frank be a part of that new life. That won't be easy. But I know that you're right. Come on. We'll give you a lift. No, my car's outside. I'd like to drive home alone. I feel different. I can't explain it. But it feels good. I'm sorry, team. I was wrong and you were right. Yeah, but it could have it could have turned out very differently. No way. Not with you in charge. You really are something. Hey, we should put this on. No, 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 no. Strictly expense money and well worth it. Excuse me, Mr. Russell? Yeah. There's a phone call for me. Nobody even knows I'm here. Well, it's a lady and it sounds very important. Hello? Oh, Jonathan, thank heaven you're still there. Dorian? Yes. The most horrible thing has happened. My apartment has been robbed. Please, the whole place has been ransacked. Won't you please come over here? I need you badly. Oh, when I have a headache, even music hurts. But I don't reach for aspirin or Tylenol anymore. Today, I choose Advil. Advil contains the non-prescription strength of ibuprofen. That's the medicine in the prescription brand Motrin. I like that. Just one Advil is as effective as two regular aspirin, yet gentler to the stomach than aspirin. Advil turns a headache off. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Watch. I'm killing roaches just by doing this. This is combat, a totally different and powerful roach killer. So effective, I don't worry about roaches anymore. I simply place combat discs anywhere I saw roaches. Combat kills roaches here and here. Even kills them next to food. And combat works for three months. I love the difference it's made in our home. Combat's in, roaches out. Now available for ants, too. Now, perfect polished nails in seconds. Lee Press-On Nails in fashion colors. Press-On Color, no messy polish. Press-On Color, no drying time. Press-On Color, no chipping ever. Lee Press-On Nails in fashion colors. Everything you need for longer polished nails. Lee Super Stick Tabs and 20 Lee Press-On Nails in a variety of sizes. Available in a rainbow array of today's popular colors. So press-on. Lee Press-On Nails now in fashion colors. It was our nation's greatest test. This will be a people's war. You'll be in the thick of the fighting. I have a chance to be a part of to make history. A test of courage. I don't want to let you go. And of friendship. You should have turned me in, you yank the truth. Get out of here, Billy, before I have to kill you. Before I have to kill you. This year, America's story is North and South, book two, starting Sunday. This is Steve Bell, the latest on the Soviet nuclear accident and what it means. Tomorrow on ABC's World News This Morning, before Good Morning America. This Saturday, it's America's greatest horse race, the first jewel in horse racing's Triple Crown, the 112th Run for the Roses, the Kentucky Derby, live at 4.30 Eastern this Saturday on ABC Sports. Tomorrow, discover a paradise on the Pacific with stars shine on the beach. I don't know anybody that's leaving. And catch one of Hollywood's most visible blondes, Kathy Lee Crosby. It's kind of important to change the image that I've had. On Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Tomorrow.
An ABC News Brief, brought to you by Olympus Cameras. Now from New York, Peter Jennings. Good afternoon. There are conflicting reports about the number of people killed during that apparent meltdown on Saturday at a Soviet nuclear power plant near Kiev. Soviet television reports that only two people died. There are unconfirmed reports that as many as 2,000 people may have died. The Soviets today asked Sweden and West Germany for advice on how to put out a fire still burning at the plant. They also appeal for medical assistance. The Polish government has warned pregnant women and children not to eat fresh vegetables or drink milk. And it said that iodine tablets will be issued to fight the effects of any possible radiation. I'll be back in just a moment. Not only is a 35 millimeter Olympus Infinity totally autofocus, auto quick flash, auto everything, it's also totally weatherproof. The new Olympus Infinity. Absolutely great pictures, absolutely no hassles. That's News Brief. I'm Peter Jennings. Why do you read TV Guide? TV Guide is the world of TV in a nutshell. A nutshell? A nutshell. It's just an expression. If you don't read TV Guide this week, you might be missing something. Tap cold. Thumbs up. Tap down. Push up. Pull down. Set up. Sit down. Shot go. Dress up. Dress down. Upstream. Downstream. Uptown. Downtown. Shot go. Upbeat. Downbeat. Speed up. Slow down. Shape up. Slim down. Shot go. Drink up, chow down, reach up, hand down, cook up, cool down. Time's up, so come on up to Shapko. The $100,000 pyramid today.